Good morning, the month of the Lord Church. My name is Pastor Christoph, and uh, I'm going to talk to you today about unbelief. Or uh, impatient, which means unbelief. If you are impatient in your life, there are so many things that cause that. Like you, you should find out in your own life that we are in the society today when uh, the, the, the modern life is to get things done so faster. And uh, as we are projected to get things done so quick, in a few moments and a few minutes, we get ourselves in, the, in, in, in a time of uh, stress. We get ourselves in a position where we feel like uh, things are not working for us. I know many of you and myself, we have experienced that before. But this morning, we want to think, uh, we want to talk about through that. We want to see how people handle things in the Bible. The Israelites, when they left Egypt to, uh, to go to the promised land, they are in a position and the place where they're supposed to have a little bit of patience because Moses was mandated to go to the mountain to bring the Ten Commandments. So because they cannot wait to have a dark instruction from the Lord Jesus Christ, they're putting themselves to do something else. So we're going to read it from Exodus 32 this morning to show you exactly what is taking place. Uh, 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 verse 1, I start from verse 1. When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron, come on, they said. Make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. Just think about that scripture. They don't know what happened to him, but he brought you for so far. But they can't wait. Now they start questioning why he's not there so quick. Verse 2, so Aaron said, take the gold ring from the ears of your wife, son, and daughter, and bring them to me. Verse 3, all the people took the gold ring from the ears and brought them to Aaron. Then Aaron took the gold, met it down, and molded it, it into the shape of a calf. When the people saw it, they exclaimed, Oh, Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Wow. Verse 5. Aaron saw how excited the people were so he built an altar in front of the calf. Then he announced, tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people get up early the next morning to sacrifice, burn offering and a peace offering. After this, they celebrate with a fest feasting and a drinking and they indulge in pagan revelry. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. It is the inspired word of God. We thank you how you instruct us, guide us through the inspired word. And I pray this morning that you teach us a lesson from what we're going to talk about this morning. God, help me to just deliver the word that come from you directly to our soul, to our heart. Change us. Make us whole for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. How does God feel when we sin? That's my first question. How does God feel? We know that God is a compassionate, is a God who loves us. God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He sent us that we can be redeemed. But there are moments God has to be, to be angry and seeing exactly what he's doing for his people, but people are in a position where they could not able to follow what God wants them to do. So the people became impatient while waiting for Moses, and with that true faith, they decided 
to make their own God. The God that made out of their own hand. Something that they can physically see so they can be satisfied. Now, they are in a position when they say, we don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. Well, I don't know about you sometimes. I know for whatever things are happening in life, we want to get things down. I want to do this. and Things are not happening so quick. And I, I'm so stressful. I I'm, I'm look like, a, oh, man, how, why? And all the other question is there. Why things is not working the way I expected? In this life, we have, to, we have to look forward for where we're going with a lot of patience because patience is one of the gifts that God gives to us. It's a virtue. But it's difficult that we can find those kind of attitudes we cultivate in ourselves to be able to, to use those patience in order for us to accomplish something that we expect to accomplish. And many times because that, we are really put ourselves in a dangerous position. I talked about earlier, stressful life. The stressful life is, is dangerous. You can put yourself in a stressful life because it's not anybody gave that to you. You put that in yourself. Now you have to go to the hospital to spend a lot of money in the water, give you all the medication in the water to get healed. But God is telling us something that is so powerful. If only... If only we can cultivate in our own life, understand that this life is just a momentarily thing. It comes and it goes. And as long that in your heart you are good, way, you have a good position in your spirit and your heart to do whatever you think it will be done, you just have to go with the flow. Sometimes we don't follow the flow. We set it up the agenda, and we want to get that done. If it's not done, then we put our own self in a situation that will damage our health. They ask for a substitute, a visible God, tangible object to follow. No God anymore. But I don't know about you, Today, it depends how we serve our God. We may not have any, the object, the calf, uh, the golden calf in the front of us. We may not uh, fabricate that, but our way, the way we embrace our mighty God, the way we elevate him, the way we worship him, the way we care for him, the way we think about him, we might maybe, maybe have a golden calf in our life constantly. Because the life is whatever is more important to you more than God is already doing the same things like these people have been doing. So our prayer is God to help us to understand the things that make people God furious sometimes. You can, you can put yourself in a position not knowing that the way you are reacting, the way you are pushing things so hard can, push you, can put you in a position where it can be detrimental to your own health. I pray this morning that God to open our heart and, and, and our mind to understand that this life is a short life that we have. We want to take as much we can to live a better life knowing that God is for us who can be against us. If God is in your life and God is directing your, your step, things are going to happen. He always says, give him praise for all things that happen to you. He doesn't say if you just happy or things is that good, well, but he said give him praise. So you are conditioned to do that. By doing that, you are inviting God constantly in your life to direct your step in the way you should go. I understand that things are tougher. So what they've been doing is now, the Bible said that the next day, the people offer burnt offering and a fellowship offering. 
In other words, they are dancing. You know, the activity led to immorality. They are doing things that we can see all over the world. They do things like we can see. You have seen things that people do when they don't know Jesus, when they, they just be in the flesh. We call that in the flesh. So they worship the golden calf in seeing that the rejection of a faith that they confess in the beginning. God said to them from Egypt, live here so you can get to the promised land. God's world cannot be changed because God never changed. But they make a choice because they are so impatient, they make a choice and it's now putting things in their own life. The things that God sometimes just don't want to, he wants to erase them from the map. We have seen how, how Moses just come back to plead, have intercession prayer for the whole population. So Romans 1, 22, 24 said that, so God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their heart desired. As a result, they did evil and degrading things with each other bodies. You know, when you put God other God in the front of you, beside the God that you know have saved you, the God that make you have a lot of testimony, and you can look back, you can say, my life was like this, he saved me here, saved me there. Now because of little things is happening, because of impatient spirit in you, you have replaced that God with something else. I pray that God will help us to learn from this message today that no matter what is going to happen to our life, we have to rely on the time of God because God's timing is the best one. Your timing may not be helpful to you, but when you can just be patient a little bit to see what God is going to do, you will see that God's timing is more important. I want to see right now how intercession Moses prayed. You know, that's why prayer sometimes is very important. I talked earlier about coming together. We are body, we are family. It's very important. So the leader of Israelites in, in, the, in the wilderness, Moses, now he wants to intercede for the sin that has been committed. He started from verse 7. The Lord told Moses, your people whom you brought from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. He made that so clear. The Lord told Moses, and how quickly they have turned away from the way I command them to live. That's God speaking. Then the Lord, verse 9 said, the Lord said, I have seeing how stubborn and rebellious these people are. So the things that they have done, God is recorded as Moses can hear it. Now God is speaking the judgment upon those same people who are called his own people. Verse 10, I will destroy them and I will make you, Moses, into a great nation. That's the remark of God for what has happened in the wilderness. When he went, he didn't show up earlier, according to them. So Moses, so I, I love this kind of things. Moses saying here, why are you so angry? This is a verse 11. Why are you so angry? with your own people whom you brought from the land of Egypt with such great power and such a strong hand. You know, some people come to me, they say, how to pray? I always say to them, you know how to talk to me, right? You know how to express your heart when you are not happy. God is the same. You talk to God the way you feel. And God is going to heal you. 
But you have to know that you are speaking God. So this is Moses who are speaking God, to, to God we are here. Verse 12, he said, Why let the Egyptians say, Their God rescued them with the evil attention. Another word, God, you promised that you take us to the promised land. So when those people who are evil in the first place heard about what you are doing or you're going to do to us, how are they going to consider you? That's a good challenge to the Lord, right? I love God, that kind of prayer. Because we need to pray honestly about how we feel. This is the way he's feeling, but he's quoting God exactly what he says in the past. And in verse 13, he said, now he go to the covenant. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, why are you uh, uh, angry? Now he said, our, our enemy, what are they going to say about us? Now he's recording the covenant, verse 13. Remember your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I love that. You bound yourself with an oath to them, saying, I will make your descendant as numerous as the star of heaven, and I will give them all of this land that I have promised to your descendant, and they will possess it forever. This is the way we're supposed to be praying. You know, this is about unbelief, but it's a powerful way to approach God. You know, I always say, I always say to people, you know what? The only things that will stop you to pray is the condition of your heart. If your heart is so clear, and you know that you don't have anything with the Lord Jesus Christ, you can talk without being afraid. You can call all the words that God said to you to him back. But if you hear your heart is corrupted, if your God is full with sin, it's difficult to, to do kind of prayer. To petition, because your petition is the fact. You are quoting the fact without being afraid. That's why powerful people do their prayer. When you pray this kind of prayer, God will respond. Because our God is not man to change. His character is so powerful, and he will listen to your prayer. Moses' reputation reminded the Lord of his promise to the patriarch. The Lord changed his mind. Verse 14. So the Lord changed his mind about the terrible disaster he has threatened to bring on his people. Uh, ESV says this. The Lord relented from the disaster. People of God. Prayer is so powerful. Please, listen to me carefully. It doesn't matter how things are look like in your life. It doesn't matter how people are saying it will not be possible. Get yourself. Cleanse yourself in the place where you can be. And go to the God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords with your problem. And be bold to speak to your God. Would that be afraid? One thing I have learned, and I say again, when you want to pray, be bold. The only time you're not going to be bold is because you're not ready to pray. When somebody is not ready because of the heart condition. When the scripture says that the Lord repent or change, it is using human language to describe a divine response. We always say that God never changed. God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. But the, the, the character of God is still the same. If you move in the righteousness, the blessing already is, you line yourself up to the blessing. But if you move yourself in the condition that is, uh, uh, that's going to be like a sinning against the Lord, you put yourself in the position. So God's character never changes. God never changed. We are the people who are messed up constantly with our life. And I pray God to open our, our mind and our heart to understand this. The bottom line is that God is entirely consistent with his nature. Let's take the example of uh, Jonas. Jonas. 
When God saw that the, uh, he had done and how they had put a stop of the evil ways, because we know Nineveh is a place where people are sinning. And the God sent Jonas to go there. Jonas said, I won't go. But finally he went there. He preached the gospel and the people repent. Because that land needed to be destroyed completely. But because they have listened to the word of God, they will repent. God did something amazing. In his holiness, God was going to judge Nineveh. Because Nineveh repents and changes his ways. As a result, God and his holiness have mercy on Nineveh and spare them. This change of mind is entirely consistent with his character, God's character. I pray, Lord God, that to help us. Because our God is unchanging in his nature, his plan, and his being. Our King and our Lord. For God to tell Nineveh, I'm going to judge you, and then say, he refused to judge you. It's not that because he changed. It's because his nature and his character. He loved mercy and forgave the penitent. Has God forgotten to be merciful? No. God is always the God of mercy. That's why now, what I'm going to tell you to do is living for Christ. We're going to read the scripture, we are called to live in Christ. Philippians 1, 21 to 27. But we're just going to read one part of it. Apostle Paul said that, For me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. Living is to live for Christ, and dying is even better. But I prefer to live. Let's, let's be, uh, uh, go forward here. Verse 22, uh, 22, for if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. Hallelujah. So what can you do and uh, can you say and what Apostle Paul is saying today? For me to live is what for you? And to die, what is it for you? You can make your own word there. But I, some people say, some people who don't know God, they might say this, for me to live is money. And to die is to leave it all behind. Another person might say, for me to live is fame. And to die is to be forgotten. And another person might say, for me to live is power. And to die is to lose it all. But let's listen carefully for Apostle Paul words. For me to live is to live for Christ. Life that we have today, we have to have one straight focus is to live for Jesus Christ. There is no any other way in this life. Living for Christ is, is one of the ways that we are living for. Your life on this planet is meant to live for Jesus Christ. So you are called to do that. God is God who is generous. He is a God who loves every one of us. I want to I want to read the scripture so we can conclude here. This comes from Matthew chapter 20, from verse 1 to 16. He said one here, is a parable of the vineyard workers. For the kingdom of heaven is like landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and send them out to work. So this is what is going on here. Verse 3, they are, uh, uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning, he was uh, passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. And he hired them, telling them he will pay them whatever 
whatever was right at the end of the day. So this is 9 o'clock. We see the same things in verse 5. At noon, he did the same thing. They had people who came to the field. And at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the same thing, people come to the, to the, uh, to the field. And uh, verse 6 says that at 5 o'clock, so at 9 o'clock, noon, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. Those people also was called in the field, and the God hide the, the land on that hide them. This is an important thing so I want you to see. The evening he told the four, the four men to call the workers and pay them beginning with the last workers first. When those higher at five o'clock were paid, each received the full day's wages. So another word, whether you work at nine o'clock, noon, three o'clock, and at 5 p.m., all of them have received the same wages. This is another demonstration of God's generosity to all of us. Another word, when he talks about wages, it's not about money here. Wages is not about what God is, what this parable is about, it's not about money. It's about the good news. The good news is something that God himself gave his life for people to come. Something that you cannot pay with. So whether the person come earlier to do the work of the law and they come at the last time of his, the last year or last moment of his life who come to the law, you cannot say that that person is not going to go to see Jesus Christ. What they are demonstrating here is we have to be open up to everyone. There are some people who come earlier. There are some people who come late. But they're all going to be in the kingdom of God. You cannot pay these things. Jesus already paid for it. So it's not for you and me to start judging who's come late and how this person come late, therefore he have to be treated a different way. The kingdom of God is come for all of us. The only things you and me have as a job is to preach his gospel, is to share the good news, because people need to know that after they leave this planet is to be in the presence of the Lord. That news needs to be shared around the world. Are you sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? Now, surprising, those higher first complain that they work longer but earn no more money than those who start late in the day. This is not about complaining things. It's about do the work of God. When you are in the kingdom, you find the true joy. Be in the presence of God, like Matthew 6, 33. You, if you are there, you know really who is your Savior. Your Savior is Jesus Christ. God sent him to redeem you for things that uh, we cannot pay for. It. The joy of knowing that is huge. A lot of people need to have the same knowledge you have, the same truth of the gospel. So we have responsibility today to let people know the generosity of Jesus Christ. Salvation is available to all on an equal basis. It's available to all. Paul even explained that there will be those who are saved at the last moment of their life. Their entrance into the kingdom of God is not less legitimate than anyone else. That's what it is. We have to look at it that way. Why? Because nobody can earn entrance into the kingdom of God 
God is the only one who pay it all. So we have to keep walking. Whether it's a family member, if that were your friend, never give up on them. Because God put these things for, in you. You have to share with other people. I, I want to read the two scriptures and then we're going to close. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14, 15. If any man walk which he has built upon it remain, he shall receive a reward. If any man work is burned up, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet to us through fire. Second Timothy 4 verse 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award, award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearance. May we receive the ultimate reward today. God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. If you know Jesus Christ, be happy. But you have a responsibility to let your family members to know that, your co-workers to know that, and the people around you. That's the way you're going to become like a land loner who invites people to the house of the Lord. We have all have responsibility. So I pray that today's message is to encourage you. I encourage you because you have a lot of responsibility. We all do have. It's especially when you are Christian. You do have a responsibility for family members, for your friends, for every one of you. So thank you for coming and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that you put this word in our heart today. You help us to see you in the lens of who you are through our daily life. Everything that we are, everything that we're doing, everything that laid in front of us, Lord Holy Father, that you guide us, you keep us safe, you direct our step, and most important, give us love so we can love people. We can share the goodness with people. We can tell them how good you are. So mighty God, help each one of us today. We give all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. I want to pray for everyone that's watching this video. Everyone probably who doesn't understand how can be patient, who's struggling on this life. I want to pray with you. And I want you just to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. Help me to love you and to serve you. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who are watching, who are here, who have repeated this prayer, Holy Father. This is your prayer. Draw them close to you and help them to find the way so they can start learning to serve you and to know you better. We give all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says? Amen. Amen. Amen.